Hello, and welcome to this edition of Phantom Sports Talk. I'm Hannah Rizuda, and joining me today are Morgan Benihoff and Matt Branch. Our topic is the NFL Draft, specifically the top 10 picks and the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, guys, let's get started. So the first pick of the draft this year will be the Tennessee Titans, who are 3-13 and during the 2015 season. The Titans' top need is an offensive tackle, and coming in close second, they will also need a lead running back. Matt, what is your opinion on that? Uh, I believe that they should get Laramie Tunsil out of Ole Miss. They need to protect Marcus Mariota, who had a, uh, a great career at Oregon, but he was plagued by injuries, specifically with his knee, and he also went down twice last year. So if they can just get a nice left tackle for their offense, that would be very good. I would definitely go with Laramie Tunsil as well. Taylor Luan, they drafted a couple of years ago, has been good, but he's not a true left tackle, and they really need to protect Marcus Mariota, who went down several times this year due to injury. The second pick will be the Cleveland Browns, who were also 3-13 and during 2015. They will need a quarterback, and the Browns took a swing at finding a quarterback two years ago, and it looks like a miss now. So, Matt, who do you think that guy could be? Uh, well, in the past, the Browns have taken many quarterbacks in the first round, the latest being Brandon Weeden and Jer Johnny Manziel, and those haven't worked out. But the kid out of Cal, Jared Groff, he seems like he's very promising, has great potential. I believe that he can be the answer to the Browns' problems. I think they should go with Jared Goff as well. He had a great college career, and he appears to be the most pro-ready quarterback coming out of the or coming into the draft. And the Browns really need a quarterback. Johnny Manziel's a mess. His mo most recent domestic incident has led the Browns to probably cutting him. The San Diego Chargers come in at number four, and their top need is a wide receiver. For years, it was just Antonio Gates, and now as he is on his way out, the Chargers need more help at wide receiver beyond Keenan Allen, who is out with injury for the season. So, Matt, what do you think? I can see them going and getting a wide receiver, but I can also see them going to the defensive side of the ball. They haven't had a big-name person on their defense besides Antonio Cromartie and uh, Sean Merriman, and they've been both out of the Chargers facility for a while. I can see them going down, where, down to Ole Miss and getting um, – Robert Camdichi, the D-tackle, and he can, he's very promising, he can play any spot on the D-line, and he's big, strong, fast, and physical, everything you want from D-lineman. I can see the Chargers going after Joey Bosa. They really, really struggled on defense this year. Their offense will always be, as long as they have Phillip Rivers, their offense will always be a top five offense in the league, but their defense was just awful. They could not stop anybody, and they have, they have a decent secondary, but their front seven is just horrendous. The Dallas Cowboys at the number five pick are in the need of a lot of new players after a rough season. Tony Romo's season-ending injury makes finding his replacement a pretty high priority. Matt? Well, the Cowboys' offense is seems like it's slowly deteriorating. Tony Romo, when he is in, he's playing very well, but he's had two collarbone injuries in the past year. And they had the best running attack two years ago when they had DeMarco Murray, who is now an Eagle, and they just need a running back. Darren McFadden's not getting the job done. His seasons when he was with the Raiders were just plagued with injuries, and he's hitting the lucky number for running backs. He's 28, and the lucky number for running backs are 30. So I can see them going get Ezekiel Elliott out of Ohio State. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, blocks very well, runs in between and outside of the tackles, makes all the cuts that you need him to make, and just does everything for a team. I can definitely see the Cowboys going after an athletic linebacker like, J like Jalen Smith or Miles Jack. Both are coming off bad injuries, but the Cowboys really struggled at the linebacker position with Sean Lee out. They really don't have much depth, and Sean Lee has struggled with injuries throughout his entire career. Their front seven is good, but they don't have the linebacker depth to really succeed at that position. The Jacksonville Jaguars, who are 5-11, and are in need of a cornerback. Provided Dante Fowler comes back at 100%, he'll help the Jaguars pass rush, but they must add more talent and competition to their line. Jacksonville wants to be a better running team, but the right fit at center can go a long way. Matt, what's your opinion on that? Uh, I can see them getting a center, but I can also see them going over to Oregon and getting DeForest Buckner. Oregon hasn't had a lot of big names on their defense in the past years. Kiko Alonso, Ifo Ekpreyalomu, and DeForest Buckner, basically, they've been their defense the past few years. He's 6'9", he's 300 pounds, and he can just get past basically almost any offensive, line, offensive lineman you put in front of him. Pa rush the passer. Run stopper, great pick. I would definitely go for Vernon Hargraves out of Florida. With the division that they're in with the Colts, the big passing attack that they have, they really need a cornerback that can combat that. And they really struggle on the defensive side of the ball, so I would definitely go for Vernon Hargraves. With Antonio Brown and A.J. Green in the division, the Baltimore Ravens are in desperate need of a legitimate back-end safety who can make plays and help defend against the deep ball. 
They also need a wide receiver, but what do you think they need, Matt? I can see them going and getting a defensive back, but I could also see them going and grabbing the best wide receiver, not only in this draft, but in the country, and that will be Laquan Treadwell out of Ole Miss. He came off of a devastating injury where he caught a touchdown pass, and in the same exact play, he broke his ankle severely. He came back, he played very well his senior year, and he's just, he's just everything that you need. He's tall, he high points the ball, he's very fast, he's physical, and he gets off the line very well. His first quick stepness is just great. I would definitely go for Mackenzie Alexander out of Clemson. As you said, they really need a cover corner that can cover all the great receivers in that division, and Mackenzie Alexander's the guy that can do that. Pick number seven, the 49ers hoped that Colin Kaepernick would somehow turn their team around last year, but he didn't, and they now know it's time to move on. The 49ers are almost assured of being in position to take a first-round pick for quarterback for the first time since the 2005 draft. Who could be the 49ers' fresh face on the offensive line? Well, Colin Kaepernick hasn't really produced the way he did in 2011 these past few years, but with Chip Kelly coming in, he's known to love guys like Colin Kaepernick who can get outside of the pocket, stay inside the pocket if they need to, and design quarterback runs. We don't necessarily know what type of defense he's going to run when he's with the 49ers, but a safe pick would be Joey Bosa out of Ohio State. He's the second best defensive lineman in the country right now. He can also play a defensive end, or if you need him to, you can stand him up and play outside linebacker, have him drop back into coverage and rush the passer. That's just a safe pick for them. I can see him going after Paxton Lynch out of Memphis. He's really, really athletic. He's six foot seven. He's got a cannon, and they really need a quarterback that can throw because Colin Kaepernick's not working out, and they really, they really struggled on offense this year. Adding talent to the cornerback position should be one of Miami's top priorities, as Brent Grimes turns 33 this summer, and the rest of the roster just isn't where it needs to be. The Dolphins have talent on the roster, but something isn't clicking with them. Matt, what do you think they need? I can see them getting the cornerback out of Florida, Vernon Hargraves. He's a great cover corner. He can also play a little bit of nickel. And if need be, he could play outside linebacker in like a 3-4 package where he can just go drop back into coverage and play a little bit of zone. I can see him going after Jalen Ramsey out of uh, Florida State. He's the fastest player that will probably come, out of, come into this draft. He's fantastic. He played both safety and cornerback, so he has the versatility. And the Miami Dolphins really, really need that. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers come in at the ninth pick, and their list of needs could go on and on, but their top need seems to be a cornerback. So, Matt, what do you think they need? I could also see them just going to the defensive line. Uh, you can't really go wrong getting a defensive lineman because this is the one position where you can just go in and rotate. And if either one of them falls, I could see them getting DeForest Buckner or Joey Bosa, and that would just be, again, a safe pick for them. I can definitely see the Buccaneers going after Eli Apple out of Ohio State. He had a breakout year this year and was played really fantastic on that Buckeye defense. And the Buccaneers really need that. They really struggle on the defensive side of the ball. The Giants finish off our top ten, and at the conclusion of their season, we've been able to say we've been able to see what a world looks like without a healthy Jason Pierre-Paul, and it did not look so good. The Giants need another pass rusher as soon as possible. Matt? I can see them going to Alabama and getting Sean Robinson. I really feel like he can lend a hand to the Giants' uh, pass rush, being that Jason Pierre-Paul has lost uh, a few of his fingers in a tragic July 4th firework accident. And I feel like he can do everything that you need because he's just a monster in the middle, and he can rush the passer when needed. He can clog up all the running holes that other offenses will try and run, being that they're in the NFC East, and they'll be going up against the likes of you know, DeMarco Murray, one of the best running backs in the NFL. I can see them going after an offensive lineman or a defensive tackle. They really need both. They could go after Taylor Decker out of Ohio State, the offensive tackle. He played fantastic this year. He was an All-American. I could also see them going after Ashawn Robinson or Robert Kemdichie in this draft that's plentiful with defensive tackles. I can really see them going either way. And as we said, we would talk about the 13th pick, who are the Philadelphia Eagles. And with Chip Kelly being released from his head coaching position and rumors of Sam Bradford leaving, Matt, what do you see in the Eagles' future? I can see Sam Bradford staying with the Eagles if they give him the amount of money that they want to shell out. And I can also see him leaving if he keeps asking for $20 million. He's not a $20 million quarterback. There aren't that many in the NFL right now, maybe, maybe six or seven. But I can see them also getting a quarterback. I can see them going to Oregon and getting Vernon Adams Jr., he played exceptionally well this year. Uh, you know, he can do a lot of things for them. He even threw an 11-yard pass with his left hand while he had a broken finger. 
and he can just make a bunch of throws that you need him to make. He can escape the pocket, stand in the pocket. And he's like the one of the evolutionary quarterbacks, being that he's about 5'11", 5'10". But you can see a lot of successful quarterbacks like that. Johnny Manziel had the potential to be like that. Russell Wilson's like that. Fran Tarkington. Just a lot of quarterbacks that are trying to change the game. I can see Sam Bradford leaving or staying, really, because he's asking for a lot of money, and the Eagles just might give it to him because they're in a win-now mentality as they've been locking up all their players for the long haul. But I can also see them drafting a quarterback, and if they do, I can imagine it'd be Paxton Lynch or, Par or uh, Carson Wentz. Both are very athletic, both have a cannon, and both can be very successful from the get-go. Both are pro-ready. All right, guys, well, that's all the time we have. We'll see how the draft actually turns out. And that will do it for this edition of Phantom Sports Talk. Thank you for watching. I'm Hannah Rizzuto.